I'm Dr. Greg Hall, and for whatever reason, your doctor's chosen to put you on an anticoagulant. And that means they want to thin your blood a certain amount of way. Now, the diagnosis could be because you have a mechanical heart valve, or because you had a blood clot in your leg, or because your heart's irregular. Whatever the reason, don't worry. The good news is that this anticoagulant is going to make it so your blood doesn't get so thick that a clot doesn't form or the clot that has formed doesn't propagate or get bigger. So it's actually a good thing and it's actually saving your life to a certain extent. Okay, now the anticoagulant they're using, usually it's Coumadin or Warfarin. Those are both the same medication. You're gonna see a lot of other names for it, but you'll hear Coumadin or Warfarin generally the most okay now this is a once a day medication that you want to take the same sort of time and then at certain points which could be a pain in the neck for you the doc your doctor's going to need to draw your blood to see exactly how thin or thick your blood is okay so now Coumadin taking in a certain dose makes it when they say thin or thick it really means whether your blood is prone to clot or not prone to clot it doesn't really thin your blood even though they're saying it's a blood thinner but for your purposes it's you know it's easier to think the blood's a certain thinness but you'll never notice it if you saw your blood the real the real issue is whether it, it will clot or not okay so anyway back to coumadin it's a once a day medication you're going to take generally at the same time and then once a week once every few days once a month once you get good your doctor is going to want to check the thinness of your blood to see if it's appropriate generally you'll hear terms like INR or PT INR and um, a PT changes from lab to lab so don't worry about it but INR will generally be what you'll be listening for, okay? Now a normal INR is one, 1, 1.0. That's a normal INR. If you're not on Coumadin, that's what your INR is. If you are on Coumadin or Warfarin, you want your INR to be between two and three. So between 2.0 and 3.0. Sometimes you'll have a 1.9, sometimes you'll have a 2.5, sometimes you'll have a 3.1. But all in all, if it's generally in that between two and three range, that's what we're shooting for. That's the thinness we're shooting for of your blood. And that Coumadin, while you're taking it, you're gonna to need to have your blood drawn and see what it is. Early on, you might have a 1.3, 1 1.4 too low need to adjust the dose your doctor or professional may increase the dose from whatever milligrams five milligrams to six milligrams eight milligrams to nine different people are different diets are different so the amount of coumadin or warfarin that you'll need is going to vary from person to person and it's going to vary from within your diet so now that we brought up diet let's talk a little bit about it they're going to give you a long list of things that you can eat or shouldn't eat or shouldn't have. Now these things all affect how your body metabolizes or how your body uses the warfarin or coumadin. Okay, so have an extensive conversation about what things you do eat now and the things that they say maybe you should have a little bit less of. They're gonna say less green leafy vegetables. I mean, who wants to give advice to eat less green leafy vegetables? I mean, that's supposed to be good for you, but they do generally say that. What I tell my patients is eat however you eat and do it consistently. And if you do that, I'll be able to adjust the dose of Coumadin to, to go with your diet. Um, this is within reason. I mean, obviously you can't eat greens or kale, which is really high in vitamin K every day because that's just going to totally counteract the Coumadin. But if you're going to have a little bit of it, you know, in a sensible amount, it's probably okay. It's also going to say no alcohol. Alcohol sort of extends the life of um, Coumadin. So you're going to want to talk to your doctor. Can you have a little bit of alcohol? Is wine better? Is, is hard alcohol better? Which it usually isn't. But, you know, have a talk and find out how serious your situation is and whether you can have a little alcohol or whether you're going to need to stay off of alcohol completely. Okay, so remember, Coumadin, Warfarin, they're gonna need to draw your blood. Without drawing your blood, they can't tell the thinness of your blood. If it gets too thin, it could kill you. If it gets too thick, or if left too thick, the clot or whatever that they're treating could cause a problem and kill you. So you're not between a rock and a hard place, but you just need to know 
But this is not a little light, you know, you can take your medication or not. No, it's a serious situation and you need to get your blood drawn because your doctor needs to keep you between that two and three, that INR between two and three, because if it gets too high, four, five, six, you could bleed spontaneously. I'm not trying to scare you, just telling you the facts. You don't want your INR to go too high because it could cause a bleed stomach bleed, brain bleed, or worse. You don't want your INR to be low because you're taking the medication for a reason. So you want, you want, if you're going to do it, do it right. Do it, make it, make sure the medication is taken in a way so that your INR is therapeutic. Okay, but you should need to know what's going on. Ask your doctor, what's my INR today? So that you can kind of keep track of it as well. For now, that's all I need to go over for anticoagulation. I'm Dr. Greg Hall.